Hi there everyone, today we're going to look at um, the 4-3-3 classic formation and how I think it's best played, uh, how to set up. So we've got our four defenders, we've got two centre-backs and we've got uh, two wingers, a right and a left. We've got three halves, so centre-half, left-half and right-half. I, do you know what, I wish I called them all centre-halves, I, I really just hate this because you think you have to stay on the left, but you are three centre halves, and then I have three centre forwards. Okay, so ignore the left and the right, just call them centres. You, you can think of these as link players, if some teams like to call them centre links. Okay. Now, the black team are the opposition. So we've got a pretty old-fashioned press, but it's very aggressive, very high, like a split press, really putting um, doubt in the transfer. Um, and if uh, if a team does this, basically this centre back has to be really deep. You know, I, I've put you here at the moment, but maybe right on the baseline, often that transfer, because if this player falls for that and comes much further, then there'll be space. Okay, and you know we'll never be able to predict the situation, but we have to look, and it's about taking our time and choosing the right pass. You know, because a 16 or any free hit can be quite scary, really. But all you have to do is hit it to someone in the same kit as you. So let's say that player is nice and deep. The transfer was safe. And what we'll be looking to do from here is thinking about this relationship with the centre-backs. You know, it's very easy to just watch the ball and go, I wonder what's going to happen next. But this relationship, especially from a high aggressive press, is vital. If you are square, that ball is easily cut out. It's a very good opportunity for the opposition to turn over. So you must have this relationship immediately. Okay, but let's say we pass the ball out wide. So ball's gone out wide. You know, this is an opportunity for us to, to break. So I've positioned these two centre-backs now on the shoulders. You might be in a little bit more than what I've got you here because um, it's a it's a bit risky at the moment, but yeah, on the shoulders, probably around about here and around about here. And what we're looking for is a pass forward or in at this point, okay? But let's say it doesn't happen. Let's say the black team have moved across really, really well. There was no opportunity there that the left wing back was happy with, so we put the transfer on. And just to show you that again, the ball's come back, and this relationship is established once again. Okay, so if you stay flat against a high press, this ball will not be on. Okay, or if they do attempt it, they're going to cut it and they're going to score. So if it's not a high press, we can stay flat. We just have to look what they're doing. But to be safe to start off with, definitely have this relationship. So let's, let's send it back here. And at this point, obviously, if it's come from the left, that's because that's where all their players are. And that means the space is on the other side. So good ball speed will beat a press. And again, we're looking to receive wide heels on the line. And if we did this really well, there might be an opportunity to attack. If we haven't done it well, or they're just super fast, or they're fit at the start of the game, for example, we can just um, look to send it back again. And we'll keep doing that, keep having that relationship with the centre-backs dropping below horizontal, so be running behind the ball, so we can keep that transfer going. And we'll just keep that going until we're comfortable to attack. So sometimes you back four, you just have to treasure the ball. Okay. So let's talk about the centre halves. So what would we expect from a centre half at this point? So the important thing is can you see they all run in the same direction? If the centres run in different directions, it's it's pretty easy for the other team. OK, so in this situation, you might think, right, we're going to post up towards the ball. We're looking for this area and this area. If it comes into this sort of area, no, I'm not showing you that. If it comes into this sort of area, a quick pass into this space, for either this player to run into, um, is on. But you can see at this moment in time, it's pretty risky because if we play into these three, there technically is five there. So unless we do something very quick, we're going to probably be turned over by a good team. Now, there will be three, well, there'll probably be another defender here, and there'll be three more here. So I haven't included those at the moment. 
Now, this press is super easy to beat. It's really old-fashioned. You just have to have a good transfer. They're defending the middle, so let's attack down the lines. You know, they're just saying, stop going in the middle. They're relying on getting to those wings really quickly. If you transfer the ball fast, you can beat this press. It's very old-fashioned. Let's look at something more modern. Um, this is a press I prefer us to do in a game where you have like this three and this arrow and this three as well. You are inviting them inside in many ways, like because you have this pocket for them to receive the ball into. Um, but also you're encouraging them to hit it wide. It's actually less running than the previous one to get across and win it in the wings. So this is why this press is particularly good. Um, we'd still make that similar press uh, in the same direction. This one's really important. It's kind of like a square option because if this play is really deep, we have a square. We have a down the left side of this leading player. But just to point out, if you are to do that, what's likely to happen is what I'd expect my players to do is collapse in on that ball. Put huge amounts of pressure on that player and um, try and win that ball so this if this happens we have to just play fast so we'll be looking for this sort of movement maybe this sort of movement as well so you can either bounce it straight back or slip it out and then we can go we're just going to see if we can pull them out of position and send it out and see how quick they are at getting back in position so all of these things you do just have to react okay um yeah so there's those passes but ideally, they're, they're allowing us to hit it wide. So let's just go wide. Now, I'm going to go left because the ball's on the right. They're, they're most of their players are on this side of the pitch. So this is where most of the space is. So you can go to the centre back and out. Or because they're inviting, this, this is quite safe at this point. So if it's not safe, you definitely use the centre back. If it's safe to do so, let's just shut it out wide. So obviously the black players are going to move, but if we do the transfer really well, we are going to beat it. And again, the centre halves, you have to lead in the same direction. This run, really important. We have to offer a square. We have to offer this pass. And, you know, you're basically looking for a secondary ball or a backup if we get turnover to run towards goal. Um, the centre forwards, there's three of you. Now, we haven't even spoke about you guys yet. So have you noticed, you don't have to be in a line, like in a column, like a traffic light, you, but you have to hold the middle, okay? I don't want you going further than the defender injection points. Uh, that's wrong. Defender short corner markings. So just hold the middle. And what that does, it pulls their defenders in. Pulls their defenders in, and it leaves all of this space for you to lead into. So... That sort of run, I'll just show you that again. So one of them posts more of a direct post up towards the ball. One goes to the corner and one is looking for whatever's going to happen next. Okay. So this player has these options. Uh, I didn't actually talk about the centre back. Obviously the centre back is going to move across as well, offering the transfer. So we have two options, high and two inner options, one being square and the one back. Okay. Let's talk about these blue ones. Now, this is really important. If you're going to play to your halves, you need to communicate with your halves because they're very busy people, often under a lot of pressure when they receive the ball. So unless they receive the word turn with their pass, maybe they've done a nice lead, they've got that area of separation from their defender on that lead. So you can give them the word turn and then they can go. Then they can look to link with the centre forwards and... Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so in lead, lead, lead all over the pitch. And let's see if we can attack with six players, seven players. And yeah, see if we can get an outcome. If you don't get the words turn, let's say it comes in, you, you need to be moving your centre back. Because no word of turn, they're just going to bounce it straight back either to where it came from or to one of those centre backs to look to transfer it to those players. So if they don't get the word turn, that means all the players have moved over successfully. The space is on the other side. So let's try and get it there. All right. So no turn. Expect to bounce back. The word turn. They turn. OK, really, really simple. Let's talk about this pass or the other green pass up the line to the centre forward. So if this happens, what I'd like to see or even to this left half and the word turn, I would like to see this happen as well. The left wing promotes. That's how we're going to attack with seven, those three strikers, those three inners, 
and that left winger. And whenever one promotes the back three, you have to form a back three. Okay, so you come in, you rotate around to give us safety, just in case of counter defense. And also remember, the black players, they're going to go much farther up the pitch. So we need to think about not hanging back, you know, even getting up to the halfway line if we can, so we can keep the ball in their half. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's look at um, this option here, right? Let's say we're really struggling. They've got a slightly similar press, but less set back. So they're, they're saying, right, you're not hitting it square. You're going to have to hit it in the middle. When it hits in the middle, these two like collapse really well. Uh, and they're giving us a really torrid time. They know exactly where we want to, they want to hit us to hit the ball, and they just they are, they're giving us a tough time. This is something you can do in that circumstance. So sacrifice one of your centre halves. So demote them, and we're going to a back three. Or well, technically is a back five. So what that allows us to do um, is these halves will come more in. So we're still looking for runs, but what it allows us to do is we could promote both our wing backs. OK, or if the ball was played to either of these wider backs, we now have a 2v1 versus this player. And that's all we're trying to do in this situation is create a 2v1, pass strong stick to strong stick and work our way up the pitch. OK, so if we're finding it hard, let's demote one of our centre halves, go to a back five. Then we can look to promote the wing backs, get that advantage down our flanks. OK. Now, one last thing I will say, um, you know, don't expect it to be on. You left wingers don't think it's, or, or the right wingers don't think, oh yeah, the ball's going to be on, I can play it. You know, it's a lot of running for these forwards. We will rotate them a lot. It's a lot of running for the halves. It's not that much for you guys, but um, be prepared to treasure the ball. Be prepared to keep that ball, you know, and that's all down to the movement of you four to do that well. And then the centre forwards and the halves, they can recover and lead when it suits them. And that's and we try and go. OK, hope that's made sense. Uh, we'll talk again in the next video about the press that we want to do. But I've kind of covered it in this video as well. Right. Good luck, everyone.